guys, this is uh, Shannon uh, from the YouTube channel Sharking with Seaweed and today we're going to walk you through what shark rigs we use, how we make them, what rods we're going to be using, what bait we're going to be using and we're doing it here at my house before we take the drive up to the Palm Beaches to uh, fish for some big sharks today. Today we're going to be using, this is my rod. Uh, 130 two speed accurate um, people you know make jokes about oh you know anybody could catch a shark just put a hunk of meat on a hook and you know they're dumb animals you just bring them in but that's uh, very far from the truth uh, we use such a big reel we use these big two speed reels the same reels that they use for 1500 pound bluefin tunas because on any given night the the fun part about land based fishing on any given night, you don't know if you're going to hook a 14-foot hammerhead, a 15-foot hammerhead that can easily take all of this line on this reel, you know, within minutes. So if you're there with a, a pen senator, which we used to use, or an old, uh, you know, smaller reel, a small senator or a small 50-wide uh, reel, you could easily get stripped, lose all your line, and that shark's probably going to die with hundreds of yards of line out there. So. We go prepared, we bring a, a two-speed, one of the best reels on the market, and accurate. This is a custom-built rod. You know, a lot of these new school kids, they're using shorter rods. I actually like the, the style that they're going with. They're going with seven-foot rods now, where they can put it in a harness. A guy holds the guy behind the back with the harness. I'm not a huge fan of anybody like holding me while I'm fighting a fish. So I like to dig my uh, butt in the uh, sand and use my arms. This rod was custom built by Timmy T from West Palm Beach, one of the best rod builders that I know. We actually had this built before my son was born with his name, Dante Bustamante. He's the, uh, the son and the father and son Sharking with Seaweed YouTube channel. So uh, this is one of the rods we'll be using. Here's another one of the rods we'll be using. You notice this rod, this is uh, one of my sponsors. This is Arturo, Arturo's rods. See the seaweed? He built me a Miami Hurricanes rod because I'm a diehard Miami Hurricane fan. This guy's out of Texas, builds amazing rods. I love his rods. I'll give you the uh, link. I'll give you his YouTube, Arturo's Custom Rods, ACR. Really, really nice rods. This is an older 130. This is a Santiago. We'll still use her because, heck, we have it still. But uh, we're more into the... Uh, Accurates now, that's my favorite reel right now. Alright guys, so um, the days of using a long piece of number 19 wire over where everybody's using shock leaders now. This is a 600 pound test Linger Pittman um, monofilament. This is how you'll put a crimp to a swivel which will eventually be connected to your double 19 wire. And um, to do this, you're going to need a crimper. Crimper, they'll sell them at uh, any tackle store, Captain Jack's, Captain Harry's. Uh, those are some of the local spots here in Miami. But um, here, I'll walk you through it. So you have your mono. First, you're going to get, oh, the, and these are, so here you have your sleeves. You're going to go one, I like to put two sleeves. So first sleeve through, put it on the outside, leave the inside open. Second sleeve through, and then you put your swivel. Swivel, then you bring it back around to those sleeves you put in. Go back through, back through your other sleeve. And right here, you could close it, but this is gonna catch seaweed. This is sloppy, I don't like it. So, sharking with seaweed is gonna tighten this up. So let's tighten that up so it's smaller. And let's crimp. So you're gonna position the sleeve to where you could crimp on one end of the sleeve, a little light pressure, crimp, and then you slide it to the other end and crimp. So it's crimped on both sides. That's a perfect crimp. Then back here, you also don't wanna do this. This is another sloppy way of making a leader. You leave this, this gets stuck on stuff, can get stuck on the bottom, catch a bunch of seaweed. You're gonna bring your sleeve all the way to the end. 
the end of that tail end of that tag line. Put it in your crimper. This is the three, three, uh, three and thirty-two. Crimp on that side. Crimp on this side. And we're done. So now we are going to. We have our hook already wrapped with double nineteen wire. But if I were to wrap this now to this swivel without doing anything, just like this, this is gonna be a huge belly of number, number 19 wire. This is gonna get stuck everywhere. You're gonna lose any fish you hook because of this. It'll wrap around rocks, reef. So what we're gonna do is hook this onto something and start uh, this kind of uh, braiding hair, knitting, I don't know. I call it uh, braiding. I don't know what the real word is called. You well, could you say braiding. A, put a few twists in this. Some people use tape. I like to do it like this. Get it nice and tight. So um, that's rigging up. Let's show you what kind of bait we're going to be using. So here is our bait. We have some beautiful male. No females here. Male cow nose rays. Typically you're gonna find them in, on the Gulf Coast, in Tampa's Gulf, you know, uh, Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg, Naples area. If you touch these things, they're like candy. Hammerheads love these things. And with using these, with the, I used to really love Barracuda for bait, but with using a, a uh, ray for bait, you know that when your bait's out there in rough seas, three foot, four foot waves, a lot of little stuff is gonna nibble on your bait. You're gonna have crabs, you're gonna have snappers, you're gonna have small bonnet head sharks, black nose sharks nibbling at your cuda. Within three hours, you usually have a carcass. With this, all the little stuff stays away, and when you get hit, it's usually gonna be a real one. So that's our bait for today, guys. Um, we're gonna load up and we'll see you on the beach. All right guys, so we showed you how to rig. We showed you what bait we're using. Um, I'm gonna give you one last uh, safety pointer. Let's load up these rods and then I'll walk you through it. But this is YouTube. Let's take it from A to Z and not leave anything out. Uh, rods could fall out of the car. I've actually had, uh, come over here. I've actually had, so you're gonna wanna go your rod butt all the way in deep and slide your rods in like this with the tip of the rods pointing out. It's funny, and most people wouldn't film this, but I've actually left rods, 130 expensive rods, with the monofilament dangling from my rod tip. Arrived to a place fishing the black tip challenge, the first black tip, second black tip challenge, which we won. Uh, shout out to Josh Jurgensen. And when I arrived to my fishing spot, because I left this line dangling, the line somehow either got into my wheel or one of the cars behind me, and I arrived to my 130 reel empty line and break. It stripped my reel and went so fast, probably 80 miles an hour, that when it got to the end, it popped and we didn't even notice inside the car. So never leave any loose line. Never stack your reels to where they could uh, bounce out of your car if you hit a bump. Uh, when you put your kayak in the, in, in the back of your truck, you're always gonna wanna use a strap. We've also learned the hard way with this. I'll be halfway to a fishing trip and boom, we see a kayak flying down the I-95. A lot of this Damn. stuff we've already learned the hard way. You don't have to do it the hard way. Do it safely, use a strap, get your rods all the way in there. If, you're, uh, if your kids are bringing uh, chairs, your wife's bringing chairs, Leave that stuff to the other side, but make sure that your rods are secure. That's number one. Checking out, uh, we're off to West Palm Beach. Hey guys, it's Seaweed from the YouTube channel Sharking with Seaweed, father son, family oriented fishing and cooking YouTube channel. And we're here on lovely Boca Raton. 
Jones Beach. Southeast winds, but the big sharks usually love onshore wind, so we're just gonna have to tough it out there and get through this surf. It's not too bad right now, it's maybe three to four with a, a ground swell breaking at the sandbar. Uh, we're gonna walk you through how to hook the bait, how to cut the bait, and how to kayak it out. The last time we went fishing, I remember having some nicks in my line. We had a tiger shark swim into this rod while it was out. So always check your line, make sure you're not gonna kayak out another line with a, with a bad fray or a nick in your line. You run the risk of, you know, leaving two, 300 yards out in the ocean and we don't want that. So I took out about 150 yards. I think we got all the frays. Jordan, give me a cut. All right. All right, guys. The knot that I like to use is the knot I've been using since I'm seven years old. It's just a fisherman's knot. Through the swivel, make a loop. One, two, three, four, five. Tail end back through the loop. Come underneath, bite. You're gonna pull your main line. Pull on this with pressure. Just keep tension on the tail end. And then you're gonna give it some saliva and it should slide right into place. Perfect. I also like to leave a little slip knot at the end. Ready to go, and now let's hook this bait. All right guys, we're about to kayak out our bait. This bait is a half of a cow nose ray. I like to cut them right down the middle. These things are soft, they're like candy. You can go right down, down the middle of their backbone like a, like a gummy bear. And I like to hook them right here in the soft part, but where there's still a little bit of cartilage in the back of their tail. With a circle hook, you can't really embed that hook too deep or it's not gonna pull out and catch the shark in the side of the jaw. Here, I can't really double, hook, uh, double back and hook itself here or here. So that's where you wanna hook a cow nose ray. Maybe over here. I know other people like to go on the wing, but I'm going right here in the back. And we're going up. There's no right or wrong way to kayak out of bait. However, there is a dangerous way, and the way to do it that's less dangerous, a lot of kids get hooked, and that's because they'll do this. Put their hook in front of them while they're kayaking. I mean, just science tells you not to put a hook in front of you with something pulling behind you. If a wave hits it, someone runs into the line, the real backlashes, that hook's gonna come back and hook you. So what I like to do is put the bait behind me in the back of my kayak, run my spider weight to the front of my kayak, this little spot I have here. I'll sit in the back here, kayak out. When I get to my destination, I'll reach behind, flip that bait out, and with my paddle or my hand, I'll knock this off and drop it into the water. That'll anchor and the line will be perfect. And I kayak out without the risk of getting hooked. Follow us out there, guys. Sharking with seaweed. Go ahead and kayak this bait out. My teammate Isaac's gonna watch the rod. Since it's a strong south, southeast wind, we're coming down. You see the other rods over there? There's another advantage. If you start way downwind, once that wind pushes you and you get to your destination, You'll be where you wanted to start originally instead of having to move all your stuff down the beach after the wind takes you. Sharking with seaweed. We have our new apprentice Isaac on his first shark of a nice organized responsible tournament, land based shark fishing tournament. All right, Jordan, for the YouTube video, we're all gonna guess what shark this is. From the way that it's fighting, I wanna say that it's a seven foot bull. What do you think it's gonna be, Jordan? 
didn't see a fight, but it put a good bend on the rod. But since then, no drag pull. I say a little bull shark. A little, little bull, bull shark. shark. How about you, Juan? Same as you. And you? I will say a little hammer. Little hammer, all right. Let's see who wins. Hammerhead. Rod. You'll see Dante Bustamante sharking with see This is Dante's rod. Are you videotaping? Yes, sir. Right here, get this. Get a picture of this. Right here. Big old. It's a bull. It's a bull. Tiger. No, is it? Tiger. Tiger bull. No, it's a bull. Tiger, yeah? Big tiger! Yeah, boy! Woo! One! Yeah! How about it, one? Ten foot tiger, baby! Look at the camera, boy! Oh, let me get the tape! 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 Let me get Take the rope off, take the rope off. Take it off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright guys, get in, get in. Get in, come here, fix it. Get in, Isaac. Isaac, get in. Alright, go. Oh, let's get it. Yeah! Woo! Let's go! Let's Big go. boy! Hey, yeah, yeah, boy. Seaweed, father, son, team. Sharking with seaweed. Trying about a day or two. Checking out, sharking with seaweed. Have a good night, guys.